Hi poetry lovers, welcome to my channel Bella Poetry. My name is Bella and I love beautiful poetry. In this segment of our second series, The Best Love Poetry and the Poets That Penned It, we will talk about an American poet, Sarah Teasdale. Sarah Teasdale was born on August 8, 1884 in St. Louis to St. Louis to an old, established, and devout family. Even as a child, she loved pretty things. Actually, her first word was pretty. She had three older siblings that loved her. They called her affectionately Sadie, and they treated her like a little princess. But uh, in spite of uh, her growing up confident because she was so loved, she grew up with anxiety and it made her feel very dependent on others. She was often alone, although she had three siblings. The siblings were much older, so they didn't spend a lot of time with her. She had to amuse herself. She didn't have a lot of peers. And her parents thought of her as very frail and delicate, and thus, thus did not allow her to run around as they did with their older children. So she grew up feeling very lonely and shy. She was actually homeschooled until the age of nine. From the age of nine, she started to attend a girl's school, a private girl's school, and there she made friends and began to write poetry and prose. Uh, as a young woman, she joined a group of young girls who were artists from St. Louis, and they called themselves the Potters. Together, they published a magazine called The Potter's Wheel. Uh, Sarah Teasdale was a great fan of the Italian uh, actress Eleonora Dews. She loved her so much that she dedicated her first book of poetry to her and titled it Sonnets About Dews. It was published in 1907. When she was 21 years old, Sarah Teasdale went on a tour of Europe, Egypt, and Holy Land. She loved the architecture. She was very impressed by the culture of these countries. But unfortunately, she became very sick, her health deteriorated, and she had to spend five months in a sanatorium in Connecticut until she fully recovered. Now, her second collection of poetry called Helen of Troy and uh, other poems was published in 1911. And her third collection of verse, Rivers to the Sea, was published soon after that in 1915. Now, many young men were interested in Sarah Teasdale because she was very delicate, very pretty, and she was even a propose, she got a marriage proposal from uh, one of her fellow poets, but she turned him down and married a businessman whose name was Ernst Filsinger in 1916, and together they moved to New York. Ernst loved Sarah very, very deeply, and he was very devoted to her. But because he was a businessman, he had to travel a lot, and he left Sarah alone on many occasions, making her feel just like she felt when she was a child playing by herself in her room. And that kind of situation influenced her mood and her emotional uh, state. She was often depressed, unwell, and very dependent on the people who were around her. In 1918, in spite of her depression, she won the Columbia University Poetry uh, Society Prize, which later beca became the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry, which was quite a great accomplishment. And she also earned the Poetry Society of America's Prize for Love Songs, um, which had appeared in 1917, two years after the third collection of poetry. She published three more volumes of poetry during her lifetime. 
In 1920, she wrote *The Flame* and published *The Flame and Shadow*. In 1926, she published *The Dark of the Moon*, and in 1930, she published her book *Stars Tonight: Verses New and Old for Boys and Girls*. Now, Tisdale's work <clears throat> was characterized by its simplicity and clarity. She used conventional classical poetry, poetic forms, and the matter, the subject matter of her poems was often love, romance, and so forth. In 1929, at the age of 45, she decided to divorce her husband, Ernst, after 15 of marriage. And their marriage was very good. Ernst loved her. He was extremely devoted to her. But for seemingly no reason at all, she felt that the marriage is not for her, and she left Ernst. That left Ernst very heartbroken. They had no children, and he was left by himself. And so Sarah Teasdale devoted her life after the divorce to writing her poetry. She edited books of poems by other poets. Including the children's collection *Rainbow Ball*, dedicated to her father, as well as a book of poems by female poets. But in spite of her success, she still was afflicted constantly by anxiety, depression, and frail health. One of her brothers had been paralyzed by a stroke and spent 20 years in a wheelchair. Sarah Teasdale believed that that's going to happen to her for some reason, and uh, in um, 1933 she went. She took a trip to research a biography of a famous English Victorian poet, poet Christina Rossetti. Then she returned after this tour, after this trip to New York, with a nasty bout of pneumonia. Before she was fully recovered, the blood vessel in her hand burst, and Sarah Tisdale was convinced that this was a sign of a stroke. She was terrified that the same fate that befell her brother when he spent twenty, he got a stroke and spent twenty years in a wheelchair, will happen to her. So, unfortunately, she took her life at the age of forty-eight. On January twenty ninth, nineteen thirty three, her final collection of poetry, *Strange Victory*, appeared after her death. I will read, as I usually do, one of her quotes. I think that this quote is very wise and kind of sad, and it says, "It is strange how often a heart must be broken before the years can make it." Wise, and in this segment we will read two of her love poems. The first poem is called "I Am Not Yours." I am not yours, not lost in you, not lost although I long to be, lost as a candle lit at noon, lost as a snowflake in the sea. You love me, and I find you still. A spirit beautiful and bright, yet I am I, who long to be lost as a light, lost in light. Oh, plunge me deep in love, put out my senses, leave me deaf and blind, swept by the swept by the tempest of your love, a taper in a rushing wind. Beautiful love poem. And now I will read to you her second poem. It's called "May Wind." I said, "I have shut my heart, as one shuts an open door, that love may starve the rain and trouble me no more." But over the roofs there came the wet new wind of May, and a tune blew up from the curb. Where the street pianos play, my room was white with the sun, and love cried out to me. 
I am strong. I will break your heart unless you set me free. Very, very beautiful poem. And with this poem, we came to an end of this segment of Bella Poetry Presents. Thank you so much for visiting us. In our next segment, we will discuss the love, life and the love poetry of another American poet, Dor <coughs> sorry, Dorothy Parker, who was born in 1893. Thanks for visiting us and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.